Hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be making- That excision style, big arena, festival, lost lands, dubstep that all the headbangers love. In fact, excision was the very last show I went to before the current world event. And it was amazing. Let's get right into it. First off, I'm gonna start with how to make I use serum for all of my bases, and I could go through each individual knob and show you exactly how I made but I want to do something better for you. I want to reveal a big dubstep secret. It's what I call the basic dubstep robot base formula. And it's basically a starter base that you can make really easily. You can tweak the knobs in such a way that you get crazy and wildly different sounds each time. So let me show you how that's done. So we're going to make a new MIDI track here and we're going to use my dubstep starter rack. I like to put that on before I even start making basses. It's basically two OTTs, one EQ and a saturator. But what it does is it fattens up the bass sound that you're going to make and it gives you a good indicator of what it sounds like. Let's jump into Serum here. Bam. And to make our basic dubstep starter, we're going to use both oscillators and set them both to basic shapes. For oscillator A, a square wave. Square waves are great for basses. And then for oscillator B, turn the levels down. You can use a sine wave. This is more freeform. You can kind of do whatever you want with it. The important thing is that you set the octave up a few steps. You can do two, three, four around there and have semitone up to plus seven, okay? Here's the magic. I'm gonna go ahead into the warp here for A and do FM from B. Now, when we play this back, we're already getting some crazy bass noises, like already, just from that step. And this is the basic starter. That's essentially all you do. Add a warp here. Sometimes I like to do and anytime you turn a knob, here's the other trick. Create an LFO. I like to do just a simple downward LFO like that. And then start dragging it to the knobs that have cool sound. You noticed I was turning this. And I'm like, yo, that sounds pretty cool. So I drag the LFO on there to automate it. That's a dubstep bass. That's excision. Is that is that you, Mr. Excision? That's just that bass I made in two seconds. That plus my dubstep rack. So anytime you like how the knob changes a sound, slap an LFO on there and make it a wub. Then you can experiment with different wavetable positions. Do all sorts of stuff. All about experimentation. The knobs I like to turn are the, the warp knobs here. And then when you get to a sound you like, toss some effects on there. Bob's your uncle. Then you get something that sounds like this. As for writing the dubstep, you want to keep the rhythms simple. For maximum headbang potential, we just stayed a quarter notes. So for this, I've actually got the LFO set up as a half note, but I made two different LFOs to give it a bit of variation. Put it in envelope mode so that the bass doesn't sound the same each time. Those slight variations make it interesting to the listener. It's more dynamic, it moves more. Set aside sound design sessions. That's how I added this noise in here. That's a sound that I made when you're doing the knob turning and finding cool things. Every time something sounds really cool to you, just hit save and start your own dubstep or sound design folder so that when you get to writing a song and you like, hey, I need a fill in this certain area, then you have something to put in there just to drag and drop in. Yeah, you save so much time doing that rather than trying to make an exact sound that fits that exact section. Next, we go over to the... For the drums, especially with this type of dubstep, you want really big, thick samples. I don't really layer samples too much because that just gets messy. If you can find thick samples like that, then you're set. As you can see, I've only got the kick and snare layers over here. 
I kept it real, real simple and everything's still on the quarter notes matching with the bass that we just made. The big thing to do though is on every single drum sample, you want to make sure that you're cutting out the lows. As you can see, they're all the way up here. I could even go higher with this, around 100 hertz. And we do that because we're gonna add the big sub bass later. As for the hats, they're also matching the same quarter note pattern and then a ride as an accent. So all together you get drums. Wanna keep it as simple as possible. Quarter notes, baby, that's the key. Now Excision likes to do a lot of these type of things. This is real simple. It's just a percussion sample. Toss that in. I've got the dubstep starter rack on it as well, which gives it OTT saturation. And then I utilityed to make it mono so that it's right in the center. And the trick to arranging it is in Ableton, you right click, you go triplet grid, and then you set it on the triplet grid. So you get, you get that cool rhythm. And then finally to get this big, Thick. I've got serum again, <laughs> just three sine waves, one octaves apart, one with a semitone up seven. And the most important thing is this envelope here where I have it falling off really, really fast so that the sub doesn't bleed into one another. And then to make it wobble, I just use arpeggiator and I automate rate and gate so that it matches the rhythm of the main bass. And that just matches. Finally, just add a little bit of erosion for that fake distorted sound. And there you have it, dubstep. If you like what I'm doing, if you learned something today, please consider joining my Patreon. If you'd rather support the channel for free, you can always like and sub, that really helps me out a lot. And be sure to follow all my socials. Here they are. Thank you for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.